From the murky waters of the sportsman's paradise, stories emerge. Stories of the generations of people who have shared in the bounties of the land. Stories of communities that have persevered through natural disasters. Stories of the abundance of fish, wildlife, and adventures that create an ecosystem rich in diversity. And from the silted banks of the mighty Mississippi to the soggy marsh bottoms, from the tops of towering pine forests to the depths of the salty gulf, human and animal have shared this fortune for centuries. Enjoy these stories as told by outdoor journalists who travel across our state documenting the adventure, sportsmanship, and heritage that make us Bayou Wild. Hi, and welcome to another edition of Bayou Wild TV. We're at Morton's on the banks of the Chifuncta River in Madisonville. And Martha, you know, we've got uh, duck season is here, and typically along with duck season comes bad weather. Approaching fronts, sometimes close to freezing weather, and that can create some hazardous conditions yes. for duck hunters. So today, we're gonna show you a, a U.S. Coast Guard uh, exercise, helping if you become stranded, taking some activities and some action that might save your life. We're going to do an exercise with a cameraman aboard a Coast Guard rescue helicopter. We're going to do three passes. What we've done is we've staged two duck hunters in the marsh just where the Murgo and the ICW splits Mississippi River Gulf Outlet. I've created a search pattern for the HH-65 helicopter. Basically, we call it a creep search. It's basically legs going back and forth and just trying to get some education as to what we go through out there when we're trying to search for these people out in the marsh. Good morning, this is Delta Radar Guard with you at this time. Zero four POV flight off, responding to on ICW on the go at two nine or five five decimal seven zero eight nine or five seven decimal two two plus zero zero slash car score Lolo. Seven six sector rocket copy assume guard at minute two zero opposite position every one five minutes primary four two secondary one one two over. You know, a, a small thing can turn into something huge, especially in colder weather. And also, with duck season, a way to stay safe is also abide by the rules. And it's always good to refresh yourself on what to do, protocol. Wildlife Fisheries is going to uh, tell us some of their rules and get you refreshed just in time to have a very safe hunting season. Many hunters utilize smaller flat bottom vessels to access their hunting areas. Keep weight low and distribute the gear evenly in the vessel. Always check the weather before departing your trip. Stay as close to the shore as possible to avoid choppy waters. With those Type 4 throwables and the life jackets, I make sure they have it readily accessible so if something does happen, they can get it in a timely manner. Being the Coast Guard and everything, we I try not to violate, I try to educate. Um, if they have it on the boat and they can fix it on the spot, um, I try to make sure they do so. But not having life jackets is a big issue. And of course, the best part of hunting season is eating your bounty. After that, we're gonna add celery and onion. Um, it's five stalks of celery and two onions that I've diced, and we're gonna simmer that for about five minutes. And then after that, we're gonna add the main ingredients, the corn, the potatoes, and the thyme. Closed captioning made possible by CETO.com. Become a member. If you're a proud Bayou Wild TV viewer, check out the Bayou Wild TV Collection shirts. Both regular tee and long sleeve dry fit are a perfect fit for any outdoorsman or woman who lives and plays in Bayou Country. And they make perfect gifts. Go to BayouWildTV.com. If you're lucky enough to bag a deer or a hog this season, bring it here to Double D. Double D processes hogs and exotic game and guarantees your product is always the meat you brought to Double D. 
Double D Meats in Bogalusa, home of country smoked, spicy jalapeno cheddar, and other customized flavors. Bring your deer or your hog here to Double D, where you always get your meat back in return. It's worth a drive to Bogalusa from anywhere. Double D. Now we all know someone, and maybe in your own personal case, have had problems duck hunting with safety. We're here with the Search and Rescue Division of the U.S. Coast Guard to kind of give you some tips on being a safe duck hunter, and also, if you ever should need it, how to prepare for a rescue. We initially get the call, whether it comes on via t uh, telephone or over the radio. We initially, right off the bat, issue an urgent marine information broadcast, which goes out over channel 16, which is the hailing and distress frequency. Uh, that broadcast immediately goes out. From there, we start launching our own resources, and immediately we'll start calling the agencies or parishes that the SAR case is in at the time. At the same time, we're also launching one of our aviation resources for any search and rescue cases. as well as launching our surface resources, whether it's Station Venice, Station Grand Isle, or Station New Orleans that is in the area. In open water, obviously, we have larger resources like the 87-foot patrol boats, but once we get inside, inside waters, internal waters, especially with the challenges of the shallow marshes of southeast Louisiana, a lot of times our resources are even uh, constrained by the draft. Um, and we have to rely on the local law enforcement and water patrols that are in the agency because they'll have the shallower type resources like air boats, mud boats, to get in those areas. Well, usually with a duck hunter, obviously you're always dealing with very shallow water. Um, a lot of times the families, you know, depending on where we're, get, where we're at, we may not be able to get communications with them, whether they do or do not have a VHF radio. Um, sometimes most people rely upon their cell phones these days uh, to communicate and may not have, have a VHF radio for thinking that because they have the cell phone, they can reach out, but when you get in some of the outer reaches of the area in, in Louisiana, you may not have cell phone reception. Um, there's things that people can do to, to increase their chances in these types of situations. There's We're going to do an exercise with a cameraman aboard a Coast Guard rescue helicopter. We're going to do three passes. What we've done is we've staged two duck hunters in the marsh just where the Murgo and the ICW splits, Mississippi River Gulf Outlet. I've created a search pattern for the HH-65 helicopter. Basically, we call it a creep search. It's basically legs going back and forth. There's a half mile in between each search leg at 500 feet. And just to try to give an idea to the public as how hard it is to actually see someone in the marsh in a boat, Obviously, if it's a person in the water, the situation becomes even harder uh, to, to see someone and just try to get some education as to what we go through out there when we're trying to search for these people out in the marsh. On the first pass, the boater is going to have no signaling equipment whatsoever. They're going to be in a camouflage boat and a camouflage clothing with no signaling equipment. Six, good morning. This is Delta Radio Guard with you at this time. Zero four POV. Light off. Responding to. ICW on the go at 2955 decimal 70 89 decimal 2 2 plus 0 0 slash car score logo over 76 sector roger copy assume guard at minute 20 ops position every 1 5 minutes primary 4 2 secondary 1 1 2 over in our simulated mission first we took the helicopter in a search for some duck hunters that were stranded in the marsh without any type of signal equipment And this is what it looks like from the air when they're searching for survivors. In the second pass, we're going to outfit them with about $5 worth of potentially life-saving equipment and a survival blanket and an orange bandana. And we hope to illustrate just how effective these passive signals are at gathering the attention of our rescuers.
And this is what it looks like when you've got just some bare, minimal, inexpensive equipment. And you see the glaring, dramatic difference when they've got just some very basic, inexpensive items and also with the use of a flare. The big difference that can make, which could mean the difference between a lot of discomfort and, in some cases, people's lives. Any types of sound producing devices, signaling devices, flares, I mean, a lot of times you see the helicopters, and, you know, coming and people immediately shoot off a flare. A key piece of information, crucial piece of information, is making sure that that helicopter can see that flare. If you're looking at the rear aspect of the helicopter, the flight crew may not see the flare, so you might want to wait to shoot that flare off until that, it's obvious that that helicopter will see that flare once you expend it. When cell phones don't work because they're out of signal or you're not near a tower or you're a provider that doesn't have a signal there, we can usually, close to shore, especially in the marshes of Louisiana, we can always hear a VHF radio on channel 16. You call out to the Coast Guard on channel 16, we have a watch standard monitoring that frequency at all times. There's nine antennas spread through, throughout Louisiana that we can pick up anybody that's calling out on channel 16. I mean, Louisiana is a very challenging area uh, for the Coast Guard and for any, any search and rescue agency. Um, the western reaches of the AOR, um, like out by Vermilion, uh, that area, it can take anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes to an hour sometimes to get an aircraft on scene. Uh, surface resources are even more of a challenge for the Coast Guard and we rely a lot of times on our local agencies and uh, local state, and county and parish agencies in the area to get there quicker while we're en route, especially with aviation resources like the 65s that we have in the New Orleans area. In today's world with smartphones, I mean every smartphone can give you a latitude and longitude. And it just if the families knew where that latitude and longitude of that duck blind was, would give us a huge advantage in trying to locate these people before the situation deteriorates and becomes a life-threatening situation for them. In 1967, Dutch Stagner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stagner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. Some things in life smell delicious. Others, not so much. Like a gas leak. Propane, for instance, is naturally odorless. That's why we add strong odorants to alert you if there is a leak. So if you ever smell gas, turn your system off at the tank and call your propane dealer immediately. Propane is a safe and exceptional fuel, and we want to keep it that way. This is Don Dubuque asking you to join me as a member of the Coastal Conservation Association. For 30 years, CCA has worked in Louisiana to conserve our incredible fisheries, making sure that our fishing is great today and for generations to come. Whether looking out for redfish and specks, eliminating gill nets, building reefs across the coast, or work at the state capitol and in D.C., CCA is doing what's best for the fish and the sport we love so much. Your $30 membership will ensure that this work and our great fishing endures well into the future. Go to CCALouisiana.com and join CCA today. In 1967, Dutch Stagner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stagner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. First thing I look for is make sure they have all their safety equipment. So make sure they're in compliance with all federal laws and regulations when it comes to Coast Guard. Uh, make sure they have their life jackets. I make sure they have their Type 4 throwable and their sound producing devices. With those Type 4 throwables and the life jackets, I make sure they have it readily accessible. So if something does happen, they can get it in a timely manner. Being the Coast Guard and everything, we I try not to violate, I try to educate. Um, if they have it on the boat and they can fix it on the spot, um, I try to make sure they do so. But not having life jackets is a big issue. Um, people come out without life jackets all the time, um, and that can save their life in the long run. Whenever it's like foggy or um, say it's just like dusk, they need to have their nav lights on. If, it's in the morning and it's foggy. Uh, you definitely need to have it on for restricted visibility purposes and it can save someone's life because they can see you and if you don't have them on, someone can run up on you. 
Now, a good idea besides your personal flotation devices is put together a little kit of items that you might need. Anything you think that will become handy in keeping you a survivor and helping them find you during a rescue. And put it in a box that's waterproof called a ditch box. Hello, I'm Sergeant Nick Guillory with the Louisiana Department of Wildlife and Fisheries Enforcement Division. With duck season approaching, I want to go over a few safety tips while you're in your vessel. Even though hunting is the main priority, it's important to understand that you're still responsible for all boating laws and should follow all boating rules and regulations. Remember, if you hunt from a boat, you're not only a hunter, but you're also a boater. Many hunters utilize smaller flat bottom vessels to access their hunting areas. Keep weight low and distribute the gear evenly in the vessel. Always check the weather before departing your trip. Stay as close to the shore as possible to avoid choppy waters. While hunting migratory game birds, it is important to remember that any vessel that is hand tillered and under 16 feet in length, all occupants in the vessel must wear a PFD while the vessel is underway. Be aware of the laws when transporting firearms in a vessel, whether on public or private land. Ensure that all firearms are always unloaded with the safety on and are secured in a gun case when they're being transported through a wildlife management area. Keep in mind, it's a violation of the Migratory Game Bird Treaty Act to rally or stir up the birds in any kind of way. Furthermore, when hunting from a boat, ensure that the vessel has come to a complete stop. A complete stop is when all forward momentum of the vessel has ceased. There are a few things to keep in mind when hunting from a blind. First, make sure that your firearms are unloaded and the safety is on. Don't load your firearms until everything is set up for the hunt. Each hunter in the party should be in the blind and ready for the hunt before the firearms are loaded. Remember, if you have a dog, only have your firearm loaded when it's in the hands of the hunter. Keep all firearms in secure position to avoid any mishaps with your animal. Ensure that all hunters in your blind understand the safe zones of fire. It's important to be mindful of your hunting partner's position and maintain those safe zones of fire. Here's another example. While one hunter may be keyed in on their target, they pull back their barrel the moment another hunter enters their line of sight. During duck season, if approached by a game warden, remember to have the following. A basic hunting license, a Louisiana duck stamp, a federal duck stamp, your hip certification, non-toxic shot, a properly plugged shotgun, and if required, your hunter safety card. Have a safe and productive hunt. Discover the taste of Louisiana that's seasoned just right. Boiled to perfection and rich with tradition. A taste that's savory, crispy, and a little sweet. Discover the taste of Louisiana fish fry products. Hi, I'm Donnie Rouse. There are a lot of different reasons to shop at Rouse's. It's the people. Everybody that works here is just so nice. Our stores get deliveries seven days a week. They have such a wide variety at Rouse's. Everything's in stock. I mean, everything. We use Rouse family recipes and ingredients found right here in the store. It's the food. Rouse's food tastes like homemade. And they're local. Like us. We also have great prices. That's the difference Rouse's makes. This is Don Dubuque asking you to join me as a member of the Coastal Conservation Association. For 30 years, CCA has worked in Louisiana to conserve our incredible fisheries, making sure that our fishing is great today and for generations to come. Whether looking out for redfish and specks, eliminating gill nets, building reefs across the coast, or work at the state capitol and in D.C., CCA is doing what's best for the fish and the sport we love so much. Your $30 membership will ensure that this work and our great fishing endures well into the future. Go to CCALouisiana.com and join CCA today. Welcome back. We're here in the kitchen with my good friend Lainey Wick. Bird hunting season's over, but we've had some great fun this year, and we've got some pheasants, and we're kind of taking a recipe that you found and making it your own. What are we making today? We're going to make a pheasant and corn chowder with 
bacon. Uh, everything's better with bacon. Yeah. I found a recipe online that was for a, a chicken and corn chowder with bacon. Um, and I've just taken out the chicken and replaced it with two pheasants and then added a few more other things that it didn't call for. And it's been pretty good every time I've made it. All right, so where do we begin? We began with we made some broth. So we poached the two pheasants um, with about three quarts of water, some onions, uh, carrots, celery, bay leaves, thyme. Uh, I threw a little bit of spring onions in there just because I had them in my fridge, uh, just for a little extra flavor. Uh, I poached it for, for about 40 minutes. Uh, anytime you do it, you're gonna wanna poach it just until the juices run clear from the thigh, regardless of what type of bird you're gonna use. We're gonna debone the pheasant next. Lainey, you've been on our tower pheasant hunt, but you learned a pheasant hunt out west. When's the last time you did that, and kind of who got you started out there? Um, so I lived in Washington State, and I ended up getting Elsie, which is my dog, my German short hair pointer, and we would go once a week hunting out in Washington for training and then we started hunting over in Montana and Idaho. The last time I've been out there was uh, three years ago before I moved to New Orleans, so we haven't done that in quite a while. So here I've got about a half a pound of bacon that I diced earlier just to save some time. And I've got a tablespoon and a half of olive oil in here. So we're gonna add the bacon to the olive oil and then we're gonna simmer it for about five minutes or until the fat starts rendering off the bacon. After that, we're gonna add celery and onion. Um, it's five stalks of celery and two onions that I've diced, and we're gonna simmer that for about five minutes. And then after that, we're gonna add the main ingredients, the corn, the potatoes, and the thyme. We've had all our ingredients, they've been simmering, the potatoes have been getting soft, and we're ready for the final touches. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna stir in the pheasant first. And you said it's good to keep different size pieces in there? Yeah, I like to have different pieces just for texture, um, and, and everybody, you can do it however which way you like. And then we're gonna add three cups of heavy cream, so I've got two cups here. There's lots of different kinds of chowder, but my favorite is the cream based kind, hands down. New England style. I'm with you on that one. That's also my favorite. All right, and so we're just gonna stir that. Do you heat it up or you keep it at the same temperature? Nope, we're gonna let it heat up for a little bit, and once everything's heated, we are ready to eat it. Can't wait. Hi, I'm Donnie Rouse. There are a lot of different reasons to shop at Rouse's. It's the people. Everybody that works here is just so nice. Our stores get delivery seven days a week. They have such a wide variety at Rouse's. Everything's in stock. I mean, everything. We use Rouse family recipes and ingredients found right here in the store. It's the food. Rouse's food tastes like homemade. And they're local. Like us. We also have great prices. That's the difference Rouse's makes. If you're a proud Bayou Wild TV viewer, check out the Bayou Wild TV Collection shirts. Both regular tee and long sleeve dry fit are a perfect fit for any outdoorsman or woman who lives and plays in Bayou Country. And they make perfect gifts. Go to BayouWildTV.com. In 1967, Dutch Stagner realized his dream to run his own meat market. 50 years and three generations later, Double D and the Stagner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. Welcome back. We've been cooking our pheasant corn chowder. And you mentioned earlier that if you have a lot of vegetables that you can make go to a farmer's market to get, you got some of these cute carrots that you made, get some corn from the farmer's market, you can add this to that. Most of the vegetables that I did use in this, I did get from the farmer's yeah, market. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's see the final product. Give it a taste test. All right. Oh, yeah. It smells so good. Treja. It's a hearty dish, too. This is a, like a meal, not a side. I would definitely say it's a meal. Yeah. Very good one. All right, the true test. By the way, these birds were shot in our tower hunt if you caught that episode a few months ago. Good stuff. Pheasant corn chowder with Lainey Wick. Add the taste of Louisiana to your next meal. If you like creamy, 
bold, tangy, or spicy. Bring home the taste of Louisiana with sauces from Louisiana fish fry products. Hi, I'm Donnie Rouse. There are a lot of different reasons to shop at Rouse's. It's the people. Everybody that works here is just so nice. Our stores get deliveries seven days a week. They have such a wide variety at Rouse's. Everything's in stock. I mean, everything. We use Rouse family recipes and ingredients found right here in the store. It's the food. Rouse's food tastes like homemade. And they're local. Like us. We also have great prices. That's the difference Rouse's makes. The iconic whooping crane is back in Louisiana. If you spot a whooping crane, remember, observe and admire it from a distance, and always report any harmful activity. You can always help the Louisiana whooping cranes thrive by donating to LAWFF.org. Thank you to Chevron and the Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries Foundation for their generous support. Thanks for watching Bayou Wild TV. Join us on Mondays. Call the restaurant. We're here at Morton Seafood Restaurant twice a month on Mondays. We swap fishing and hunting stories. It's always a good time. And if you miss any episodes, go to BayouWildTV.com. You can always watch the back episodes. And don't forget, Christmas isn't that far no, off. Not. We're seeing ads. We're hearing All music. Over the place. Time to check out the Bayou Wild Collection. Some great gifts, hats, shirts for your Bayou Wild TV fans.